Welcome to CyberAry's video series on the CompTIA Security Plus 501 Certification and Exam. I'm your instructor, Ron Werner. Please visit CyberAry.it for more information on this certification and many others. In this video, I'll be discussing Section 1.1. Given a scenario, analyze indicators of compromise and determine the type of malware. This is the first section in Domain 1 on Threats, Attacks, and Vulnerabilities. IOC are indicators of compromise. These are indications that your system may have been breached or there may be some type of a security event. Malware or malicious software is a serious problem in today's computing environment. Malware is software designed to harm a user's computer or data or to steal their information. As a security professional, you must recognize malicious code and know how to respond appropriately. This section covers various types of malicious code you might encounter, including viruses, worms, Trojan horses, spyware, rootkits, botnets, and logic bombs. Be aware of different aspects associated with malware and how it could attack your system, what avenue it takes, the threat vector, and the path of destruction, as well as what type of damage will occur when that malware does infect a computing system. For example, delivery. How does the malware get to the target? Is it through email or a malicious website? Propagation is how the malware spreads. How it gets to the target is one method. What it does at the target is the payload. So what does the malware do once it gets there? Indicators of compromise, IOC, is an artifact observed on a network or in an operating system that with high confidence indicates a computer intrusion. Typical IOCs include virus signatures and IP addresses from known malicious sources, MD5 hashes of malware files or URLs, or domain names of botnet command and control servers or other forms of IOCs. As I mentioned early in this video, malware is malicious software. It's a very broad term that we use to describe software that's performing bad functions to our computer or other devices on our network. You see examples of malware on your screen. I'll talk about each of these through this video. The first type of malware I'll discuss are viruses. This was a term coined by Fred Cohen. It's a program intended to damage a computer system. There are many different types of computer viruses. Let me explain a few. An armored virus is a virus that is protected in a way that makes disassembling it difficult, so it has armor around it, protecting it from antivirus programs. A companion virus is a virus that creates a new program that runs in the place of an expected program of the same name. For example, explorer.exe, if it's a malware, it would take the place of the explorer exe within a Windows system. A macro virus uses the macro feature in many applications, such as Microsoft Office. A multipartite partite virus is a virus that attacks a system in more than one way. Take multiple paths, there may be multiple channels it uses to infect the system. It could also have multiple payloads. A phage virus is one that modifies or alters other programs and databases. A polymorphic virus is one that changes form or mutates in order to, in order to avoid detection. It's polymorphic. It changes the way it looks, acts, or behaves. Retrovirus is one that attacks or bypasses the antivirus software itself in order to hide its tracks. A stealth virus is one that attempts to avoid detection by that AV software and from operating systems by remaining in memory. It runs in stealth. I've covered many types of viruses. There are many more out there. Be familiar with these as you're studying for Security Plus and as you're acting as a computer security professional. A common malware or virus type we see infecting systems all over the world are crypto malware and ransomware. This is malicious software that uses cryptography as part of the attack. It encrypts part of the operating system or files and holds those for ransom until the ransom is met, often by paying Bitcoin. Ransomware also prevents users from accessing their system or personal files by locking those files. Ransomware authors order that a payment be sent by cryptocurrency, online payment systems, or credit card. 
Examples of common crypto malware and ransomware include CryptoLocker, WannaCry, Locky, Zcrypt, and NotPetya. Malware often likes to try to hide its tracks from antivirus. A rootkit does exactly that. It's a clandestine computer program designed to provide continued privileged access to a computer while hiding its presence. It's also a software program that has the ability to obtain administrator or root level access and hide from the operating system. Examples include NT Rootkit, Zeus, Stuxnet, NARC, and Adore. A Trojan Horse is another type of malware. It's a harmful piece of software that looks legit or is included with legitimate applications. If you remember from history, the Trojan Horse, it looked benign on the outside but was malicious on the inside. Software Trojan horses work the same way. A Trojan horse is also any application that masquerades as one thing in order to get past scrutiny and then does some malicious activity. One of the major differences between Trojan horses and viruses is that Trojan horses tend not to replicate themselves. Examples of Trojan horse programs include Back Orifice, which is an old one that hid within the Whack-A-Mole game, Stuxnet, and Zeus. Worms are types of malware that replicate themselves to systems or devices automatically across the network and without any user intervention. To spread, worms either exploit a vulnerability on the target system or use social engineering to trick users into executing it. Examples of common worms include the I Love You Worm, My Doom, Storm Worm, Anacornikova, and SQL Slammer. A logic or time bomb is any code that's hidden within an application and causes something unexpected to happen based on criteria being met. For example, a programmer hides a back door within the system and if for some reason the criteria is not met, it'll cause an infection across the network. Logic bombs is based on a logic or event happening. A time bomb will happen based on a specific time or date. Key loggers, also known as keystroke loggers, are programs or hardware devices that track the activities from input devices. For example, keys pressed on the keyboard, mouse clicks, screen recorders, or scrapers. They're a form of spyware where users are unaware that their actions are being tracked. The actions are often not only tracked, but sent to some type of centralized command and control server. Keylogger software typically stores your keystrokes in a small file, which is either accessed later or automatically communicated to the person monitoring your actions. Bots and botnets are another common form of malware. A bot is an automated software program or network robot, and it's often very small, that collects information on web systems. In its malicious form, a bot, a bot is a compromised computer being controlled remotely. Bots are also known as zombie computers due to their ability to operate under remote direction without their owner's knowledge. A botnet is a network of bots, a network of the compromised computers under the control of a malicious actor, also known as a command and control server. So a CNC server will often run the botnet. The attackers who, that control botnets are referred to as bot herders or bot masters. A backdoor is an undocumented way of accessing a system, bypassing normal channels and normal authentication mechanisms. It can be done for malicious purposes, on accident, or to allow a back channel onto servers. The opening left in a program application, usually by the developer, that allows additional access to systems applications, or data. These should be closed when the system is moved into production. You can check for backdoors by scanning your network, vulnerability analysis, or pen tests. A remote access trojan, or remote administration tool, are RATS. This is software that remotely gives person full control of a technology device. They're also known as programs that provide the capability to allow covert surveillance or the ability to gain unauthorized access to a victim PC. Some examples of RATS include Sub7, Back Orifice, ProRat, Turcojan, and Poison Ivy. Spyware and adware are types of malicious software 
that don't necessarily do harm. They're more like spying on you or providing you with advertising that you may not want. Spyware and adware are applications that covertly monitor online behavior, maybe without your knowledge or permission. It collects data and relays it out to outside parties, often used for advertising. Otherwise, it does not harm the infected computer users or their data. There's a line between illegal spyware and the legitimate data collection. The last indicator of compromise and or malware threat we'll talk about in this video is advanced persistent threat, or APT. This is a set of stealthy and continuous computer hacking process, often orchestrated by a person or persons targeting a specific entity. APT sometimes targets either private organizations, nation states, or both for business or political motives. APT processes require high degree of covertness over a long period of time. The advanced process signifies sophisticated techniques using malware to exploit complicated vulnerabilities within systems. The persistent process suggests that an external command and control, or CNC system, is continuously monitoring and extracting data from the target systems. The threat process indicates human involvement in orchestrating the attack. APTs continue today and are troublesome part of cybersecurity. Be familiar with how they work and how you can stop them on your corporate network. In this video, I talked about numerous types of malware, including viruses, ransomware, worms, trojans, rootkits, keyloggers, adware and spyware, bots, rats, logic bombs, and backdoors. Let's practice what we've learned with some sample test questions. Question one. In your role as a security administrator, a user contacts you suspecting that his computer is infected. Yesterday, he loaded a freeware program to help him perform a valid job function. What type of malicious software is most likely the cause of the infection? The answer is C, a Trojan or Trojan horse program. It hides with legitimate software. Question two. What type of malicious software is deliberately installed by an authorized user and sits dormant until some event invokes its malicious payload? The answer is A, a logic bomb. This concludes the video for section 1.1. Given a scenario, analyze indicators of compromise and determine the type of malware. Refer to your study material for more information on all of these topics.